All right, so now let's see how we're going to close these output gaps, this recessionary gap and this inflationary gap by shifting the aggregate demand curve instead. Okay, so remember, we want to increase real GDP when we're in a recessionary gap. We want to move this intersection point over to the right so that it sits on top of the long run aggregate supply curve. So we go back into long run equilibrium. We want this, when this intersection goes over here, now real GDP will increase so that it equals natural real GDP. Well, in order for that to happen, this aggregate demand curve would have to shift to the right. We would have to have an increase in aggregate demand so that it comes over here. We'll put AD prime, and now the intersection is right there. And if we come down here, you can see that we have a new real GDP, R GDP prime. And when aggregate demand increases by shifting to the right, we will close the recessionary gap, bringing the economy back into long run equilibrium. So we know that an increase in aggregate demand will lead to an increase in real GDP. It'll also lead to an increase in CPI. Whoops, that's not a C, that's a G. An increase in CPI, okay? But we're focused on the, the effect that it has on real GDP. So we know an increase in aggregate demand will lead to a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve, an increase in real GDP, making it equal to natural real GDP, closing the recessionary gap, and bringing the economy back into long-run equilibrium. Okay? On the other hand, if we're in an inflationary gap, the, the intersection is over here. We would like the intersection to be over here on the long-run aggregate supply curve. And so to shift the aggregate demand curve, it would need to shift to the left. So we would need to shift the aggregate demand curve leftward so that it's now over here intersecting short run aggregate supply right on top of the long run aggregate supply curve. So we'll call this A D prime. Since the intersection is moving to the left, our new real GDP will be right on top of long run aggregate supply, making real GDP equal to natural real GDP closing the inflationary gap and putting us back into long run equilibrium because long run equilibrium is the state of the economy where short run equilibrium real GDP is equal to natural real GDP. Okay. And so we can see then that a decrease in aggregate demand will lead to a decrease in real GDP it will also lead to a decrease in CPI, okay? Now, we have to think back a few lessons and trying to remember what is it that affects aggregate demand in the market? Well, what we learned a few lessons ago is that total expenditure, which is the summation of all the purchasing of consumers, businesses, governments, and people outside the country, total expenditure is uh, linked up with, kind of synonymous with aggregate demand. And so we know that aggregate demand will increase if total expenditure increases. If we have an increase in total expenditure in the economy, we will then have an increase in aggregate demand, an increase in real GDP, which will shift the aggregate demand curve to the right, bringing us back, or closing the recessionary gap and bringing us back into long run equilibrium. All right, and so now what would cause an increase in total expenditure? Well, there's four things actually. Uh, we've said that the four components of total expenditure are consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports, X minus M, okay? And so if we had an increase in any one of these four components of total expenditure, we would have an increase in total expenditure, an increase in aggregate demand, an increase in real GDP, closing the recessionary gap and bringing the economy back into long run equilibrium, where we want to be, where it's good for the economy. So now it'd be really nice to know 
What would cause an increase in consumption? Well, you learned this a couple lessons ago. Remember, we, we mentioned three things. We discussed three things out there in the economy that directly affect consumption. One of them was income. One of them was interest rates. You can look back in your notes and you'll see these. And one of them is taxes. Okay? And what we learned is that consumption will go up if income increases. So that's an up arrow. Or if interest rates decrease or if taxes decrease. So when taxes decrease, people have more money in their pockets, so they spend more money. Consumption goes up. When interest rates go down, that's a down arrow, uh, people are more willing to borrow money. And when they borrow more money, they spend more money, so consumption goes up. Or if income goes up in the economy, people have more money in their bank account. Therefore, they're gonna spend more money, consumption will go up, Total expenditure will go up, aggregate demand will go up, real GDP will go up, closing the recessionary gap and putting the economy back into long-run equilibrium. And so now, if you just look back in your notes, you'll, you'll see that there were other things that affected investment, government spending, and net exports. And I'm just going to go ahead and put them on here. Uh, let's see. Investment was primarily affected by expected return on investment, expected ROI, and when the return on investment is higher, businesses buy more stuff. Also, when interest rates are lower, businesses will buy more stuff. What causes an increase in government spending? Honestly, whatever the government decides, that's what. So we're just going to put government policy here, G-O-V apostrophe T policy. Government policy affects uh, government spending. So if, if the government, if Congress decides they want to spend more money, then government spending will go up, total expenditures will go up, blah, 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 closing the recessionary gap, putting us back into long-run equilibrium. This is actually a very important link here. I want to pause just for a second. I want to focus on this link. This link along government spending is a very important link because it is one of the most direct links that the government has to affecting the economy. If the government feels like there's a, a, we're in a recessionary gap and spending is too low, they can simply decide to spend more money to affect total expenditure and aggregate demand. So this is a major mechanism of Congress in affecting the economy, and we'll talk about that in Unit 3. Lastly is uh, um, net exports here. Uh, we said there were two things that affect net exports. Uh, the first one is uh, foreign real GDP. Uh, let's see here. Foreign R, well, let's do it like this. Foreign real GDP affects net exports. When foreign real GDP is higher, meaning the, the uh, other countries are in an economic expansion, net exports will be higher for us. Also, exchange rates. Actually, let's write it like this. The value of the U.S. dollar. Um, dollar uh, value. Now, this is a comparison value. When the U.S. dollar has a lower value against other currencies, People in other countries can afford to buy more of our stuff, and then net exports goes up, total expenditure goes up, aggregate demand goes up, real GDP goes up, closing the recessionary gap and bringing us back into long-run equilibrium. Okay, And so you can see there are all of these different variables that affect the components of total expenditure, which affect aggregate demand and the aggregate market. I want you to understand all of these mechanisms. You need to know whether an increase or a decrease in income will close a recessionary gap. I want you to know whether an increase or a decrease in foreign real GDP will result in closing a recessionary gap. You need to know that, okay? So practice this. All right, so now let's talk about closing an inflationary gap. We know that when aggregate demand goes down, real GDP will decrease, 
and that'll close the inflationary gap, bringing us back into long-run equilibrium. But what affects aggregate demand? Well, we, we already talked about that up here. We said total expenditure affects aggregate demand. So we know that when total expenditure decreases in the economy, that that is a decrease in aggregate demand, a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, a decrease in real GDP, closing an inflationary gap, and bringing us back into long-run equilibrium. Because real GDP will then be equal to natural real GDP, and that's what we want. That gives us, that helps us to achieve our three macroeconomic goals. Well, what affects total expenditure? Well, we know that consumption affects total expenditure. We know that investment affects total expenditure. We know that government spending affects total expenditure. And we know that net exports affects total expenditure. And in order for total expenditure to go down, it will go down if any one of these four components decreases. So if we have a decrease in consumption, or a decrease in investment, or a decrease in government spending, or a decrease in net exports, then total expenditure will go down, aggregate demand will go down, real GDP will go down, that'll close the inflationary gap and bring us back into long run equilibrium. So what affects, what would cause consumption to go down in the economy? Well, we can see right up here, we remember that there are three variables that we looked at in this class. I'm sure there's plenty more things that affect consumption, but the ones we're concerned about in this class are just these three, income, interest rates, and taxes. So I'm going to put them, I'm going to stretch them way over here. I'm going to put income here. I'm going to put interest rates. And I'm going to put taxes. We know that income in the economy Household income affects consumption. Interest rates affect consumption. Taxes affect consumption. Consumption goes down. People spend less money when they have less income. So when income goes down, consumption goes down. Well, what happens to interest rates to cause consumption to go down? Well, if interest rates go up, if we have an increase in interest rates, that means that people have to pay more money in interest to borrow money. Well, if interest rates go up, they're, they're not going to borrow as much money because it costs more to borrow. And therefore, when interest rates go up, people borrow less and they spend less and consumption goes down. Well, what causes, what about taxes causes consumption to go down? Well, if people, I'm going to move this down just a little bit, taxes. When people have less money to spend, consumption will go down. And people have less money to spend when taxes are higher. So when taxes go up, people have less money in their pocket and consumption goes down. What about investment? Well, we said that expected return on investment affects investment and interest rates affect investment. So we'll say here, expected ROI is going to affect investment and interest rates are going to affect investment. Why? Because businesses borrow money. Businesses borrow money to make purchases. They borrow money to buy trucks. They borrow money to, make, to buy machines. They borrow money to build buildings and that sort of thing. So when interest rates are higher, just like with consumption, businesses are less likely to borrow money and, in, and they'll spend less money, investment will go down. If they expect their return on investment to be low, so a decrease in expected ROI, if they expect their return on their investment to be small, if it's low, then they won't spend as much money. Investment will go down, total expenditure will go down, aggregate demand will go down, which will shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, real GDP will decrease, closing the inflationary gap, and bringing us back into long-run equilibrium. Now, we know what's going to cause government spending to go down. Well, we don't really know. We just know that it's up to Congress. And so we're going to put on here government policy. Government policy, whatever they decide to do. If they decide to spend less money, then government spending will go down. And then total expenditure will go down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
closing the inflationary gap and bringing us back into long-run equilibrium. All right, I'm getting tired and you're probably tired of listening to me. So the last thing we're going to talk about here is how to decrease total expenditure by decreasing net exports. Well, we know that net exports is affected by what's going on in other countries, whether they're in an expansion or a contraction. So we're going to say foreign real GDP affects net exports. And the way that it affects it is when foreign real GDP is down. When other countries are going through economic contraction, they're not producing as much. They're not selling as much. People over there aren't buying as much. That means they're not going to buy very much from us either. So net exports will go down. And the last thing is the value of the U.S. dollar. When the U.S. dollar has a value that is higher, when the U.S. dollar has a higher value compared to other economies, that means that the U.S. dollar is more expensive to buy. And they have to buy U.S. dollars in order to buy U.S. stuff. So they can't buy as many U.S. dollars. And since they can't buy as many U.S. dollars, they also don't have as many U.S. dollars to buy our stuff. So net exports goes down, total expenditure goes down, aggregate demand goes down, real GDP goes down, closing the inflationary gap and bringing the economy back into long-run equilibrium. That's it for unit two. It's important that you understand the aggregate market, the curves in the aggregate market, how they interact with each other, understand output gaps, understand long-run equilibrium, and understand how we can close these output gaps by shifting the aggregate demand curve and the short-run aggregate supply curve. Okay? Uh, send me an email if you have any questions. And uh, I hope, uh, uh, let me move out of the way so that if you wanted to get a screenshot of the whole thing, you could. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.